Hello, we're Jeffrey Fox again, and we're doing big data applications and analytics. And we're on lesson two of Sabermetrics, which is the uh, approach to sports analytics or sports informatics in baseball. In the previous lesson, we gave an overview of um, sports informatics in, in general and uh, a beginning uh, introduction to the baseball case with Dahm and Dulles. And so now we're in the lesson two. We're going to look at the different types of data. I'll give a bit more detail on sabermetrics, discuss all the data that's gathered, and then just give some examples of sort of what you might call very famous basic sabermetrics uh, measures. So sometimes I like to talk about big data and little data. An Excel spreadsheet, you might consider little data. A high definition video of many hours, I might consider big data. So that's measuring uh, data by its size, which is slightly superficial. Uh, one tends to classify big data by its usage, not by its size. But still, uh, for this purpose, I'm going to use that definition. So a traditional, I mean, if you listen to baseball, it's full of statistics like batting average, averages. X, Y, and Z is hitting 3.21. Uh, <coughs> an average number of hits per bat. And there are lots and lots of such statistics in baseball. So if you go to um, Wikipedia, baseball statistics, you will find 41 batting statistics. Seven for base running, 50 for pitching, 12 for fielding, uh, three overall, which is, includes this uh, wins above replacement measure we'll come on to later, and for rather general. We've given some examples here of what we'll do, ops and uh, OBA, ERA, FIP, and ERC. So baseball is pretty complicated. and. Um, Deciding which of these measures, if any, is right one, is not so obvious. And many people, of course, claim different things. And there are many combinations of, and in fact, what one tends to do is sort of assume that the answer is some combination of multiple uh, sort of basic statistics and find the best combination that correlates with success by just fitting the data. So OPS and uh, WAR are a little like that. Um, so all this points out here, these are calculated from little data. They are, if you like, the classic approach to sabermetrics, highly successful. And they're based on these uh, measures that have been gathered for 100 years or more and more of what happens at every pitch and at every at bat. So, 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 so then we divide the analysis into the thing you'll get on the baseball commentary, little data basis statistics. Then we have what sabermetrics prides itself on for a long time, which is little data still, which I'm using in a technical term, not really a derogative term, and it's not at all derogative. This is a, a very powerful analysis. And, but these are sabermetric statistics like OPS and, and more. And these are the ones that are used for the most professional analysis and the most precise predictors of success. And then, of course, we have the big data, which we move on to by using the detailed video record of every action, whether it comes from the fielder running or the batter, batter running or the batter hitting or the bat or the pitcher pitching. And this is the big. This you might, as I said, we've already decided we might call big data. Um, the Diamond Dollars book mainly f uses implicitly the uh, little data statistics, but has this very sophisticated fiscal model of baseball, uh, where, as we discussed, uh, a win is not always this has the same value because if it's near the um, on the margin when you're just about to get uh, into the uh, playoffs or not, then it's worth significantly more than um, if you're a non 
contender and of course a win in the uh, World Series is worth, worth most of all. So this is, and as we mentioned, we come on to big data, where if you, what we cover here is pitch FX, pitching, hit FX, batting, field FX, um, fielding, command FX, catching. And these are still focused on sort of individual actions. And in fact, that's, they're really, it's a bit unfair of me to Lordify them as big data because they're actually summarized by a few numbers, such as the pitching is summarized by um, the position of where the pitch enters the strike zone, the speed of the pitch, and the characteristic of the um, of the style of the pitch. So it's uh, that mammoth amount of video data is analyzed by sophisticated software to produce a few numbers. However, those are numbers that are not so trivial and not, for instance, gathered in uh, whenever this whenever this data was starting to be gathered in the late eighteen late um, eighteen um, hundreds. Um, so that's what it says here. The, the video is summarized. Um, the same big data can also measure things like physical status of the players by looking at the amount of um, you know, the nature of the of the player's stature and how much they're bending and things like that, and so it can translate not only to predicting the um, wins and losses of the of the club that can also help their players stay off the uh, disabled list. And uh, you can use this type of data in things like uh, which we'll come on to. This is a pioneering work by Vince Gennaro. Uh, using recommender engines to um, choose pitchers like other pitchers or batters like other batters. And so give you a, a bigger reservoir of data to draw deductions from. Uh, in the area of big data, uh, there is this company called Sports Vision, which is uh, the owner of all these things up here, Pitch FX, Hit FX, Field FX, and Command FX. And then there is um, Major League Baseball itself, WL BAM, which has its own system, which is just coming into, into use. Um, so why is baseball, I've mentioned this already, why baseball is chosen. It's very accurate, incredibly clean data. Um, in that the uh, people, you know, the scoring and the recording of the baseball game has been studied and become very well done, and it's over 140 years, and the metadata is clear, you know what the teams are and who, the players in the team, so everything is um, very clean. And the other thing I keep emphasizing is, baseball data, data is at most two way, and usually one way, namely there's a pitcher who tells you the speed of the pitch. There's a batter who takes a pitch in a certain region and hits it or not. A fielder who may or may not catch it after having run a certain distance. So there are implicitly two ways, because the pitcher delivers the ball to the batter, but you can analyze the hit and the pitch separately. Whereas if you try to have a more complicated game like um, basketball or soccer, <coughs> uh, then you have more than, you don't, you have um, many. Sometimes you get individual plays, but uh, there are many plays which are very complicated, and several players have to be considered simultaneously. Um, the other important feature of baseball is there's just a lot of data, because it's been gathered, as we saw, point out, for 140 years. Uh, each team plays this 162 games, and so that's just a lot of data. And so you get very accurate statistical models. Now the next uh, few uh, slides are just some examples. And um, here is a classic sabermetric statistic. So it's sort of sabermetric because it's um, slightly complicated. Namely, here are some um, classic measures. So the, you know, I told you there were whatever, about 100 measures of baseball statistics, OPS, OPS. 
BP, SLG uh, uh, measures. And um, they're just defined here. They're, time, they're defined in terms of um, the basic parameters of a, of a um, this is associated with every batter. Uh, so the number of hits he makes, <coughs> the number of base on balls he gets if the, if the uh, pitcher hits out of the strike zone um, four times, then that's a base on balls. If the pitcher hits the batsman with the ball, that's a base on ball. Um, sorry, hit bat, hit hit by pitch base. The number of times you're at bat, uh, the number of times you hit the so-called sacrifice fly, fly, which is when you actually get out. But on the other hand, you get out in the way that a teammate uh, is actually either scores or at least advances a plate, and so gets nearer to scoring scores. And here, TB is total bases. So these ones here are very classic uh, baseball statistics. Here are some combination of them. Total bases over at bats. So that's your so-called slugging average. So-called because obviously if you hit the ball harder, you're gonna get more bases per, per hit. And so your slugging average will go up. A big, a big SLG is a um, heavy hitting batsman. And uh, here we have the on-base percentage. That's not really, that's not emphasizing at all any difference between uh, singles and doubles and things. And by adding them together, we get a measure of the times they're on base, which is often all you need to do. Because if you get on base, anybody, uh, then your position to run further, and also your you in getting on base, you allow anybody else on base ahead of you to uh, run an extra base or two and possibly even score a run. So this is a measure that, you know, if you were sitting on a desert island, I don't think you'd come up with this measure. And its value comes from experience. And so it's just one, me one of the 100 measures. Now here we have the weighted on base average, which is even, which is actually more Dramatic sabermetric uh, statistic because it's actually comes from the same essential uh, parameters: the number of at bats, which is um, the times actually the, the batter does a clean has a chance to get a clean hit because he doesn't walk, he doesn't get a base on balls, doesn't get hit by a pitch, uh, doesn't reach on an interference call, um, and doesn't uh, have one of these sacrifices. We have the hit by pitches, the sacrifice flies, the walks, the intentional walks. Um, obviously, sometimes uh, if you're a great player, uh, the uh, pitcher will sometimes deliberately walk you so that they can pitch instead at the person after you, who is presumably not as strong, or maybe not for this particular pitcher as strong. So that's a intentional base on balls are a well-known feature of baseball. So. Then we have singles, doubles, and triples. So we have a giant linear combination here. It is linear, which is sort of interesting. <coughs> but, and these parameters are just determined by fitting data. And it is designed to give the best correlation with runner scoring. Because what counts is not whether you score a run, it's whether the team scores a run. Um, that's why if you um, um, get a single and there are other people on base, then that's good. Uh, and so these numbers here are just empirically fitted with the data on wins and runs, I should say on runs scored. And you get these numbers here as the best way of fitting the data. And you can see triples are weighted more than doubles and here's singles at 0.8888. Home runs are, of course, the best, 2.1. And then you divide by effectively the number of real times you're on base. And you calculate these coefficients from the data for every year. Uh, because as this is a purely empirical formula. So it's not like the uh, previous one, um, the on base plus slugging, which was a sort of intuitive measure, but then had some, ex ex you could explain it. This you can't explain. 
except that this combination with these coefficients gives the best correlations with run scoring. And you go to this niftyfangraphs.com website, and it will tell you all of this stuff. Um, now we come to pictures. And if you usually read a description of baseball, you talk about the earned run average. And this is what I say, this is the classic baseball statistic. It is not what you would use if you were a brilliant sabermetrics person trying to get the best estimate of the best, boss, best picture in the world. Or more precisely, which picture a given team should use now to maximize their chance of winning the game. An ERA is the number of runs uh, given up by a pitcher every nine innings pitched. Nine innings, of course, is the traditional length of a game. And you, you uh, a pitcher sometimes that rarely actually uh, finishes his game. <clears throat> They're usually are relieved somewhere along the line after six to eight innings. But you can obviously uh, take the number of runs, the opponent's score, divide by the number of innings you pitch, and that gives you ERA. Uh, there are so-called earned runs and non-earned runs. A non-earned run is where the team scores a run, but it's due to a screw up by a fielder. Uh, and that's not charged against the ERA. And it's also a little complicated and it's sort of misleading for relief pitchers. Because when the relief pitcher comes on, they are not charged for, and they're going to almost typically when they come on, there's a problem. Because uh, maybe the leadoff, uh, Opening pitcher has stranded a couple of people on base. You bring in your super duper relief pitcher who's good at throwing half a dozen pitches to, to uh, completely destroy the opponents. Uh, but if that pitcher makes a mistake and lets in his hit, and those uh, say those uh, two people on base score, that's actually charged to the opener, not to the relief pitcher. So they can. So there's a measure called blowing the save, which uh, which um, is relevant here, because the save uh, the save is when you the relief pitcher comes on <coughs> uh, in a in a position where the team they're representing is in the lead, and they um, and they and the game and the, that team wins the game. So they that's blowing the save is when they let people score, so the opponents win the game. Another interesting feature is that this is also clearly dependent on the field. <coughs> different fields have different sizes. If you have a small field, it's easier to score home runs. If you're at a very high stadium, like the Colorado Rockies, uh, which is at a high altitude and a rather um, non-humid uh, climate, uh, balls travel further, 10% further than the sea level in a current muggy um, um, eastern climate. So, and also those, um, co uh, I gather that uh, that particular climate makes it hard to throw um, effective breaking balls because your air resistance is lower. So you don't get this uh, nifty um, um, action in the air due to the air ball interactions with the seam and things like that. And I gather it's not so easy to hold a dry ball. So as if you want to be a great pitcher, at least have great ERAs, you probably don't want to work for the, the Rockies. But the measures the sabermetricians will use will take out those effects. Um, so ERC is an example of trying to modify ERA uh, to take out um, uh, some of these effects and it, um, is again a rather peculiar formula, which is not easy to, um, uh, again, you have to determine the parameters. Here's some horrible formula involving um, hits, home runs. Here you have the ones that aren't home runs times 1.255, the number of home runs times four. You have, uh, here you have uh, base on balls, hit batsman, and intentional base on balls. 0.89 here, 0.56 here. Um, these are all, this is like um, 
um, the weighted on base average result. These are parameters determined by fitting the data to, to, to make to find a formula with you know unknown coefficients which has the best possible correlation with success. Because um, what, what you want is runs. And so this is designed to be able to uh, predict runs uh, which the, the, the pitcher gives up. And when that's, of course, what you need to know, to know whether how your pitcher is going to form, perform. And um, <clears throat> so it's uh, quite complicated. It puts in uh, the difference between singles and doubles and home runs. And it has, a, of course, <coughs> given its empirical nature, this is a fudge factor here to, to average out to the right answer. And um, there are obviously you can modify this formula. But it points out what you can do in baseball. There's so much data. You too can invent your magic formula. By an oil, but you have to have an understanding of baseball. You have to know what's important. You need to know that home runs are more important than singles, and that uh, bases on balls are different from uh, singles. And they, you need to know what's important. That tells you the features if you're doing your neural net. These are the features you put into your neural net to allow it to, uh, um, which you feed in the values of and getting predictions out of. So to, this is generally true. In order to understand data, you need to. Uh, you can't do it sort of like a monkey. You need to know, you need to be a, have a pretty deep knowledge of baseball so you know what's important. But once you know what's important, the data will tell you the answer. It will tell you these coefficients. And here is um, another um, pitching measure called fielding independent pitching. It's a direct try measure that tries to strip out the uh, role of defense and the luck and <coughs> exactly the order the pitching is done. And it um, is actually, I gather, pretty successful. It's a little like um, the uh, one we just saw, the ERC, it's 13 times home runs. It's got the same things, the innings pitch, the strikeouts. The other one didn't have strikeouts, if I remember. I hit batsman, home runs, bases. Um, bases on balls, and um, there's a magic constant which is adjusted so that the mean FIP is equal to the mean ERA. Um, but the idea is to get something which has the meaning of ERA, because ERA has the right meaning. It's the number of runs that the pitcher allowed to happen, allowed to. Uh, Occur, but there's got. We need to try to remove all these irrelevancies, which are outside the pitcher's control. And the idea is, the pitcher does control these numbers. He controls how often the batter hits the. By the quality of his pitching, he will allow home runs or not allow them, and he will hit the batsman or not hit the batsman. He will have strikeouts, which of course the best thing to have is the safest thing to do. If you can strike out, which means you throw three strikes and the batter misses all of them and has to walk uh, sadly back to the uh, uh, clubhouse, that's the best. So he, we know that uh, people who so, um, pitch a lot of uh, strikeouts, that's good. So we, we that's uh, got a minus sign in the FIP. All right, so this is interesting how you think of what the uh, what you're trying to measure actually depends qualitatively on, and then, and it's interesting also that these are linear. It's not so obvious they ought to be linear. And I think if you did other models like neural nets, they would effectively not be linear. But this is, these are classic sabermetrics things, are linear uh, combinations where the coefficients like here, 13, 3, and 2, I gather that that probably comes from the brilliance of the sabermetrician. But the details of this constant here comes from fitting the data. All right, if there is a comment here on the ultimate zone rating, which is a fielding measure. Remember, we did batting and pitching measures. In this um, lesson, remember, we're just doing some examples, because we're not going to go through all 100. We can go to Wikipedia and find those 100 measures. And even those aren't really probably the important measures. The important measure, the ones you're 
brilliant new neural net or deep learning algorithm will come up with. Uh, and they will not be summarized in, in Wikipedia. They'll be secretly in your $10 million code that you're making your fortune from. Okay, so here we have ultimate zone rating, which is a measure of fielding. And what it does is it looks at an event that the person, the batter hits, there's an out or there isn't an out, there's an error or there isn't an error, and it tries to compare each event, each fielding event, I pointed out the power of baseball is that everything can be thought of as an event. A pitch, a bat, a field. And there may be a throw when the fielder either catches the ball or fields it cleanly and throws it in, then the throw is an event. And whether the next uh, fielder catches it, that's another event. So everything is a rather small number of discrete events. And in ultimate zone rating, you divide the baseball field into zones. You assign particular fielders, left, right, center, shortstop, etc., a responsibility for those zones. And here are some, just here's a picture of the ultimate zone rating for the Yankees in 2012. <coughs> uh, where I gather on average, they were actually below average. I assume these minuses are like Porgita here is negative, and that means he's probably below average. Uh, not as bad as Granderson for that position in this zone here. So that's just an example of how you build sabermetric statistics. Thank you very much. The next lesson is the sort of uh, the third one on these uh, basic statistics, and it covers wins above replacement, which is a pretty nifty uh, uh, measure which is based on these, what you might call primitive measures, which we discussed in this lesson. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox signing out.